Unfortunately, in healthcare, pediatrics is not really focused on. When the companies look at where they're going to spend their investment dollars, they a lot of times don't spend it in pediatric devices. The time that it takes for a device to come to market in the pediatric realm is far longer than in the adult medicine world. We as pediatric specialists see that kids need these devices, but sometimes we face that challenge that the devices are not available. A lot of times we have to use adult devices in pediatric patients, and they are not built for pediatric patients. The FDA knows that there is a need for more pediatric devices. Fortunately, we had key stakeholders that allowed grant funding to be supported by legislation such that we're able to have these consortia. We call ourselves the Southwest Midwest National Pediatric Device Innovation Consortium. The short name of it is SWPDC. We help innovators build better devices for kids. One of the key things we're able to do is really take some of the small amount of funding that we give and see the effect of that multiplied multiple times over by these innovators. We're able to build prototypes, go out to find investors, and get a lot more funding. We want to be able to help as many innovators as we can such that more devices can be built for kids. The world focuses on adult healthcare in many instances, and so this gives us an opportunity for our pediatricians to bring forward ideas focused only on pediatricians to solve problems for our children. It helps our clinicians or our inventors have an opportunity or a place for them to bring their ideas. It starts really when we start incubating the idea, running it through our proof of concept process, all the way to the commercialization journey of that process. The SWPDC is a very important entity for dealing with the challenges of pediatric device development. I think it's well recognized that this organization has a, a huge impact on accelerating the path to actual utilization of devices that are under development. It provides uh, seed money and grant support for new investigators. It's a place where creative ideas for technology development can be rapidly pursued and rapidly brought to fruition. Medical schools, children's hospitals, the medical device industry, investors, our government partners such as the FDA and the NIH, all coming together to have an ecosystem that will allow all of us to work more closely together to help build these devices. One of the uh, important and unique features of the Pediatric Device Development uh, Consortium is that it brings together the resources and talents of multiple institutions in the region. That would include Baylor College of Medicine and of course Texas Children's Hospital, but also Rice University, Texas A&M University, and other institutions as well that all work together in a very collaborative manner, and I think it adds great strength to the capabilities of this program. Over 100,000 people come to work in this four square mile area. The Texas Medical Center is the world's largest medical city with over 12 hospitals, four medical schools now. So we've been able to take advantage of that because with all these medical schools and hospitals, there's a lot of shared resources, the clinical expertise that we have at Texas Children's Hospital the medical expertise as in Baylor College of Medicine, the engineering schools and their expertise to all combine to help build their devices. It really started about five years ago when Myra Davis, who's our CIO, was given the additional eye of the responsibility of innovation, always asking the question why, thinking of the best way to treat our patients because we don't settle for good enough. And we started to grow that team. And since then, we have numerous examples of where an idea became a productionalized tool that our clinicians can use to treat patients. The Euroflow project has won several awards, both locally and uh, nationally. The device design incorporated a major part of my research year. Continuous bladder irrigation it can be a very laborious task. The only way to know if it's working or not is to, by directly visualizing it. So we worked with the Rice University undergraduate students to help create this autonomous continuous bladder irrigation device. A big part of this past year has been collaboration, both with myself, Dr. Patel, uh, Dr. Koh, and the, the Rice University students. Pulling in all our own experiences, I think, really helped us make this into a, a real prototype and real product. So it really starts with research. If you have an idea, you bring it through a research lens. You apply, you look at the data, you look at you know, clinical trials and outcomes, and then you bring it back to our clinical care teams. You bring it to our clinics, you bring it to our ORs, and then you apply that and then you see the outcomes in real life. Once that's completed, then we take the next step of broadening that out to other organizations.
We know that for pediatric devices, we have to stay within the children's hospitals. We have to stay within the medical school realm so they can be developed further, such that when we go to investors, we have a little bit more final product that they'd be much more interested to support. About the past five years, we've given out about $1.5 million in funding. Those companies have been able to raise approximately $200 million such that these devices can get to market. We're really setting the foundation right now. We're hiring new residents all the time. They're born with laptops and they're born with computers and phones and they have the ideas. They'll think outside the box and so they have an opportunity to bring their ideas to fruition here at Texas Children's. We are open for business. Uh, we want to help you. If you go to our website at swpdc.org, you'll find that we have a ton of resources and quite a lot of information. So I highly recommend you visit our website to see how we can best assist and we're here for you. Thanks for watching, but now an important disclaimer. The content of this video is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Viewers should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they may have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.